Today I shall be talking to you guys about Residency Chronicles. So a lot of people out there doesn't really understand how physicians are being trained. And I'm going to give you some information that might be more helpful so that people can have a better understanding of how doctors go through residency training. So after four years of medical school, you're going to apply for the match. Now the match is basically you've picked a, a medical student has picked a specialty that they want to go into. For example, I wanted to go into emergency medicine when I was in my fourth year of medical school. So I did multiple rotations and at the end of my fourth year after taking my USMLE step two and complex level two exam, I applied for the match after rotating at multiple institutions and then they give you a letter of recommendation. You fill out an ERAS application online, which is the electronic re residency application service, which all the applicant pool sends their application every year, both international medical students and U.S. grads. Now, what happens is students are selected by different programs either based on their board scores, how their letters of recommendations are arranged, and eventually they get a phone call saying, hey, Joe, you've got an interview at, at this hospital. And students go for as many interviews as they get, get, are offered, and at the end of the interview process, both the residency program and the students gets a chance to rank the programs according to their preference. So if you have 10 programs, you rank them from number one, which is probably where you want to go, to number 10, which is the least likely place you want to go, but still, you put them on the list. Now, there's a computer algorithm that now tries to match what the programs where you interviewed at ranks all the applicants, you know, from one to whatever, you know, 100, depending on how many applicants they get, and the computer try to match your preference with your match uh, number from the residency program that you did interview at. If you do successfully match, what happens, you get a slot, and you automatically go to that program. In the January, which is the spring of the, the, the year when you're graduating medical school, most osteopathic applicants get a notification in February that they're matched and allopathic, which are MD students, wait till March, end of March, before they discover where they're going. Now the excitement begins. You've got a job. You're going to go into residency. For me, I match into emergency medicine. So exciting. Exactly. So what happens next? Well, you graduate medical school, you get a cap and gown, you celebrate with your friends and family, and then the reality begins. And then you start your first year of residency training, which is known as an intern year. Now, intern year can be different based on which program you're in, but the general premise is you get to rotate at different departments in the hospital. For example, uh, if you did an, uh, a regular intern year, you know, you do cardiology and pulmonary and then you do infectious disease and you actually go through different departments and then you get maybe about four months of training in your own specialty. Uh, so that's how it's broken down the electives that are split up in between and then you get vacation time. Now when it comes to the hours of residency, they're very, very brutal. Okay. They're not easy. When you start your residency, now you've got more responsibility from being a student, okay, now the life of patients is in your hands. Now you have to make clinical decisions which is going to impact patient management. A lot of work, a lot of responsibility, but it's very exciting because now all the stuff you learned in medical school, right, all that pathology, physiology, all that biochemistry that you've learned, now it's going to come to play. Now you're going to be able to apply it at the bedside while you're signing your name behind the dotted lines. So, what's the average hours a resident usually does? Well, it varies based on which rotation, but on average, you know, most residents work between 60 to about 80 hours a week. Now, that's minus education time. So that's just clinical work. And then there's education of blood out time, about five hours of education, maybe every Wednesday or Thursday, depending on which program you're in, you know, where you're just purely dedicated to academics. And then there could be a journal club where you sit down and read articles and journals, and those are other extra hours. So, you know, by the time you look at it, within a week, you're looking about close to 85 to 90 hours of just your dedication. Now, residents often have to be on call. Now, depending on what institution you're training, 
you might be on call every third day. What does a call mean in residency? A call simply means you come to work at let's say about 5 p.m. or 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon and you don't leave the hospital until maybe 11 or 12 p.m. the next day, roughly about 20 hours of being in the hospital. Well, that's one kind of call. Another kind of call is you can also be on call for about 24 hours. Is that even possible? Yes. So in residency, as a resident, you get to stay in the hospital from 6 a.m. in the morning and you don't leave the hospital until 7 a.m. the next day. Well, as an intern, obviously there's been changes. Uh, you know, you, an intern, which is a first year resident, can only do 16 hours of work. Okay, after that, you're obligated to go home. But, you know, as you start to go up in years, you still get to do a 24 to 30 hours of work in residency. So now imagine you've been up from 6 a.m. taking care of patients. Okay, you're up all night still taking care of patients. And the next day at 6 a.m., you're still up and you're still there till 12 p.m. Okay, that's about a 30 hours of nonstop clinical work. Okay, that's the demand that is expected from residency training. Most residency training is between three years to seven years. So let's say you do a pediatric or you do emergency medicine, internal medicines, uh, family medicine residency. Those are three years long program. Now, if you start to do generous surgery, uh, this is about five years program. If you do neurosurgery, that's about a seven year program. If you do five years of general surgery and you want to do a specialty like a fellowship, that's extra two years. So that's about like another seven years total in surgery. Now, if you decide to specialize in internal medicine and go into fellowships, that means after three years of residency training, now you go into a fellowship, okay? Now, when you get to fellowship, that's another three years of fellowship or two years of fellowship, depending on which fellowship you go into, like pulmonary, you know, if you want to do cardiology, gastroenterology, infectious disease, endocrine. These are subspecialists in internal medicine. Now, let's talk about how residents are being paid. Well, payment in residency is little, okay? Well, that had some more insult to the injury, correct? Well, it's true because what happens is after four years of medical school and you're in debt, right? You already got about two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you've borrowed to go into medical school. You're not getting paid in medical school. Now, when you get into residency, an average resident salary is between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year. What? Yeah, that's true. Why? Because that's the sacrifice you have to make. So think about it. You know, you've completed a four-year bachelor's degree. Okay, some people have a master's degree, then go into medical school of four years, and then you go into residency training, and you're still earning between forty and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so depending on how long your residency training is, they might increase about maybe a few thousand dollars a year, and you still have to learn to live little. That is why. We have delayed gratification in medicine because the passion of wanting to take care of patients supersedes the monetary benefits of the profession. Okay, now after residency is over, now you become an attending. Well, if you finish residency and you decide not to go into fellowship, uh, if you decide to go into fellowship, you become a fellow and you're still underpaid and working longer hours, okay? But once you become an attending, then you, you know, you get to have a better life depending on what specialty you're on, okay? Some specialty are more demanding that you need to be in the hospital longer and you still work longer hours even despite being an attendant. Some specialty are not. So it's up to you whatever specialty you choose. But the most important thing about picking a specialty is never ever pick a specialty based on how much money you're going to make. Because I can guarantee you the price you have to pay for medical training the years and the long dedication is not worth picking a specialty based on the compensation you're going to get at the end because you will be so miserable getting out of bed in the morning is going to be such a hard thing because if you because you pick the wrong specialty but if you pick a specialty you really enjoy like for me i love emergency medicine like i get up in the middle of the night and yes we're going to the emergency department and we got to take care of patients and we don't know what's walking through that door but when they come in we got minutes to save your life and i enjoy that it's adrenaline rush you know get you going you got to think clinically fast intervene immediately 
fitly and save patients' life. So that's how I get my enjoyment from my profession. Now, other people have different love for what they do, and everybody eventually picks something they like. Okay, now this is what residency is truly is, and I just wanted to give you guys and shed some light on it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you really enjoy it, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button to this channel and visit my website www.ftplectures.com to watch over 300 hours of clinical videos, educational videos that will help you enhance your knowledge in medicine. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.